is uh, you know, your, your idea that if philosophical knowledge is sufficient to clarify many of the um, conceptualization of ideas, then the work for the human rights movement will be uh, uh, greatly enhanced and there will be um, much more clarity in terms of the various problems of human rights, even though they express themselves in different cultural traditions differently. Oh, so this is one of the conditions, but the only one, not the only one. Not the only one. Mm -hmm. the only this one. is the philosophical test. Yes, mm -hmm. and it's also uh, it, it's very important for, for practice. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're quick. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, uh, no, please, oh, yeah, no, please. No, 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 no. You, you charge. Just a you charge. moment. You are a guest in my room, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Don't they, take they any charge. money outside. They, they charge in the hotel. No, please. You are a guest in my room. How yeah, it's possible? Yeah, he's, uh, he's very generous. Mm. <laughs> I charge one more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one more mm -hmm. No, we can have the uh, coffee first. Mm -hmm. Take it over. Maybe. You you may move. <laughs> I, I may not. I'm sorry. No problem. May I move just a little? Yes, you have. You have uh, within the reason of the table, no problem. <laughs> Thank you. Would you like some more milk? Yes, or? I think more milk will go. Normally I drink this, uh, oh, that's fine, thank you. I drink this uh, cafe au lait, mm. half regular coffee, but Turkish, my gosh, oh, the Turkish, I like co coffee, Turkish, Turkish co coffee. coffee. Do you like? You, I like, mm. but you, have, you can put a spoon <laughs> inside with, uh, with a very thick coffee. Yes, you yeah. let's go to the yeah, bottom to and the bottom. you can. Uh -huh. Every morning I have one in Turkey, uh -huh. Turkish uh -huh. coffee. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. No, I think uh, I must say, if not the most, I think one of the most uh, dedicated and uh, uh, committed to the life of the mind. You are you are involved in this uh, this work almost uh, twenty four hours every day. <laughs> now I think for the protection of human rights, three three things are very important. Mm -hmm. One is the sincere will. Yes, yes. And this is most of mostly missing. It uh, has some has something to do with attitude and belief. Yes, mm -hmm. attitude and also I think knowledge helps to the formation of this uh, uh, will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is why in, uh, the education. At a kind of education of human rights is very important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the third one is to be able to make right evaluations of the situations in order to find what one has to do in the existing conditions yes. for the protection of human rights. Right. This is where I think we can solve the problem of cultures. Yes. Uh, yes. Because uh, in different cultures, in different conditions, not only cultural but in general conditions, we have to do different things to protect human rights. Yes. And, but this is not that because human rights are different yes. here yes. and there. Human mm -hmm. rights are always the same. And we, we must have the clear concepts of human each right. Mm -hmm. In general, what, is, what are human rights? Mm -hmm. And this is not clear still in, right. in the minds. Right. Because you see that in the international instruments. Yes. There are, to me, rights that they are not basic rights. Yes, they I are think basic and not basic rights. Right, right. And this makes uh, confusions and leads one of the reasons that leads people uh, to say that in different cultures they, they are different. Mm -hmm. Not the only one. This the, the second one is of course political reasons. Mm -hmm. When people like you say no, it's not in our culture. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I'm very very uh, severe in opposing that. I say. Uh, human rights, if human rights 
bring demands for a special treatment of, hum of all human beings. Mm -hmm. If you say that it's not be done below to our culture, you don't consider yourself as human beings. Right. If right. you are, it's, it's for every human being. At least not. You are a human being, I am a human being, he's a human being. Not at least uh, the idea of the civilized human being. There is no, even not civilized human being. Just human, human being. being just just, just human being. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. human being. I think the, uh, the issue um, is that basic human rights, there's a debate now. Uh, the uh, instruments that used for promoting human rights, say from the United States or from uh, Western Europe, uh, put a lot of emphasis on political rights, freedom, uh, of speech, oh, 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 yeah. Thank you. Now, political, is, to me, to, uh, according to the, my criterion that I developed, uh, economic, social, and political rights are not basic rights. Not basic rights. Not basic rights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there is a difference because you, the, the right to education is in the covenant on ec social and po economic rights. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, education is a basic right. Mm -hmm. Uh, the right to work is a basic right, but the, ri the right to have syndicates is not a basic right. To the right to have syndicates? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, a social right. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a way to protect some rights in the existing conditions. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a social right, or a, not only economic, it's a social right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the... Uh, Social, ec economic, and social rights and political rights are rights that through which we can protect human rights, mm -hmm. basic rights. Mm -hmm. uh, and this depends on the way there are limits drawn, as I said. Sure. Lim limits drawn to the citizens. And it's important how these limits are drawn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it's in, in, in are drawn by taking into consideration their implications. For the cities, for all the citizens of the country, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then they they protect these rights. Otherwise, mm -hmm. if the, these limits are delineated uh, by by other determinants, mm -hmm. mostly interests, mm -hmm. group interests, mm -hmm. then they don't protect human. There is a gap between basic rights and social and economic rights. But the basic rights, in addition to education. What are some of the other uh, basic rights? Education, health, freedom, freedom. There are different, two different kinds to me. The right to education, the right to health, the right to food, the right, uh, it's a standard of living as it's called in the uh, freedom of, of thought, freedom mm -hmm. of opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, the right, the right to life, mm -hmm. the right mm -hmm. to life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are basic rights. Uh, normally, the first set, not education, but uh, uh, right to life, right to uh, food, right to maybe clean water and clean Include air. Included. Included. Yes. You know, that and the right to education and the right to freedom. And these two, how are they related? You know, the, the question is, uh, China is arguing the right to life, uh, right to uh, food is something that we've done. For example, in only seven years, more, more than 400 million people were lifted out of the abject poverty. So they mm. said, we've done a lot. And on the other hand, I think their attention to uh, not only uh, rights of thought, right of uh, speech, or even right of religion, are not... I'm not uh, sure. The, the right to speech, so-called the right to speech, if it's uh, Separated from the right, to, uh, the right, the freedom of thought, yes. or freedom of opinion, is not a right. You mean the right to speech is not? Yes, yes. It's How about not assembly, right of assembly? There, the, the right of assembly is, is something be between 
in the borderline of individual rights and collective rights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, because it's assembly, it's a group. Yes. So yes. It's not directly a, a, a right like the others. So the basic rights are rights related to the individual or yes. the dignity uh, yes. and autonomy individual. of the individual. The, uh, mm -hmm. Directly to the group rights mm -hmm. in my classification are not basic rights, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they are very important when they are implications of basic rights of individuals in existing conditions. Yes, yes. Then oh. are, if they are not, they are interests, and mm -hmm. it's very easy to confuse interest and rights. Yes, group rights. yes. Mm -hmm. But group rights are uh, not basic rights, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. implications of basic rights. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. one of them, it's a very conf uh, confused, uh, the, the so-called cultural rights. Mm -hmm. It's a very confused uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. concept. Mm -hmm. The right to culture is something different. It's an individual right. Yes. But the, right, uh, the cultural rights are group rights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very careful, mm -hmm. and group rights are important, for, and I see only mother tongue is an important group right, right mother mm -hmm. tongue. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you know, the question of privacy, yeah, my uh, diaries, my... Uh, yes. Um, is that basic? The it is basic. Is the John Stewart Mill, you know, talks there, about But there it. are problems. Many times I was asked uh, when... Someone, it was in Germany, I was asked about yeah. this. Uh, in, when uh, someone is beating her, his wife, uh, the police will enter or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we had such a case in Turkey where there was someone killing uh, his, uh, his mother or his sister, and the police didn't go in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it would, if he had go, uh, when he would go in, he, the people could have li lived more. Yes. So this is and violation of human rights because the life is being threatened. Yes. Mm -hmm. I say w uh, human rights also should not be taken uh, by heart, understood by heart. It's basically rationa uh, rationality or yeah. rational calculation? No. 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 Right evaluation. Right of evaluation of, evaluation the, situation. of the situation. And mm -hmm. of course, the will to protect rights, yes. not other intentions. Mm -hmm. But if I were a policeman, mm -hmm. I would get in. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is not prevented by the law, but people mm -hmm. don't know even the law. They confuse things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a police may, in this situation, enter mm -hmm. the house. Mm -hmm. So It's not against the right to privacy. Right. But the, um, what is the relationship between this uh, distinction between ethics and uh, cultural morals and the basic human rights? Now, the first one is, first one, let us say, see the first distinction. Cultural morals, what I call cultural morals, are what uh, the value judgments and norms, empirical norm prevailing in a group. And it's specific uh, to that group. Specific to that group, but changing, of course. Not of course, the, of course, but, it's fluid. And the problem is now we have the so-called multicultural society. On the same, uh, in the same place, uh, we find different cultures living together, and th this this is the, the problems, the yes. problems, the reason of the problems. Mm -hmm. uh, but these are the goods and the bads. Sure, absolutely. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, these are value judgments to protect the order of this group, mm -hmm. and. If they are uh, if they are deduced with sagacity, such mm -hmm. norms, mm -hmm. they play an important role in our social life. Yes. But uh, in in the condition that they are deduced, but mm -hmm. when the conditions change, mm -hmm. your understanding and application of rights have, no, have to adjust. They have no base. Yes. But people say it's our culture. They try to yes have them on right. going on. And these are, in, in the meanwhile, there are new norms on the same issue. Yes. And yes. new approaches to the same issue. And the clashes come from there. So I say they are empirical, of empirical origin, norms mm -hmm. of empirical origin. If we see how a value judgment, a cultural value judgment is, uh, is um, uh, formed and how it is changed in, in time, 
we see that they have an empirical origin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I s they are usually deduced by a kind of um, uh, induction. Yes. Yes. Kind of induction. Now, if you look at the uh, situation between the migrant workers from Turkey and Germany. In the States, you mean? In Germany. In Germany. And uh, the situation is such that the uh, migrant workers bringing a different kind of uh, yes. set of cultural values and the Germans uh, would like to protect and order. And the Germans, for some time, uh, had this uh, now outmoded idea that ethnicity was the most important criteria. You know, a Turk uh, lived in Germany for 10 or 20 years would not be considered as a German if uh, someone in Russia was of German uh, uh, origin would be considered German. But right now they open up. Once they open up, then um, the uh, society is changing very rapidly, not, not just Germany, but France and England, uh, because of the population of these societies in, in, in Germany about uh, 80 million, but uh, France, Italy, and England, or something like uh, 50 million. So the situation is changing very dramatically. Uh, from, for a long, long time, there's the conception that the criteria and, of course, basic values in the West. Uh, not basic values or ba ba basic value judgments. Oh, we have I to see, be very clear. Very careful it's basic, to distinguish uh, Yes, them. basic value judgments mm. uh, from the West, um, in a way, were voluntarily accepted by a number of society as universal. As universal they ethics. are not universal. That's, that's my Cult question. Cultural morals and yes. norms are not universal. I know, but the, the truth of the matter, say empirically, that uh, these values, I would say local knowledge or local values, have become globally significant. Uh, For when, example, which one you mean? Um, some of the basic, uh, like the idea of liberty, or the idea of due process of law, or idea of rationality, you know, enlightenment rationality. Uh, certainly what is that, rationality? Uh, <laughs> yeah, there are many forms of rationality now. And then, uh -huh. if we speak of rationality, we come to the result that there are many rational. I'm strongly against all this uh, debate. I, see. I you're, have a you're, paper you're against. I have a paper in Benin on that. Uh -huh. Rationality and rationalities. I see. Let's say uh, Habermas notion about communicative rationality and uh, how how would you uh, uh, would that consider as a variation of ra rationality or not? I what is rationality? What do you mean by rationality? I know the know. opposite of metaphysics in a popular sense. This is the trouble. Metaphysical, rational, metaphysical, rational. So we have to uh, transcend to overcome this uh, duality. Let, let's say, um, you know, the kind of empirical science, either as a way of uh, deduction or as a way of reduction, they believe is a rational discourse, very different from the romantic notion or from uh, so-called oriental mysticism. So there's a very strong sense in the West that science which has a unique position, and there's no way you can do science without certain kind of a rational procedure. And would, would that considered as a, a specific case, which is universalizable? No, no. no. Mm -hmm. This is the positivistic approach to yeah, science. Yeah, I agree with you that. Mm -hmm. But important is knowledge, and that we have not only scientific knowledge. Sure. Philosophical knowledge is also knowledge, everyday knowledge, sure. but what is knowledge? Sure. Knowledge is every proposition which has an object independent of the person who puts it forth. Mm -hmm. So we have different kinds of knowledge. But on the con a proposition is a no knowledge, piece of knowledge, if there is a, it has an object independent of the person who puts this proposition forth. Mm -hmm. So there are different kinds of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So there's always uh, an empirical and objective side to uh, knowledge. Knowledge is objective. Right, right. But wh what do you mean by, what I mean by object is not an ontological object, but relations. Sure, sure. So I, I don't know whether uh, this makes sense or not. I make a distinction between private and personal. Uh, private and personal. In the following sense. You know, uh, we have Michael Polanyi's notion about personal mm. knowledge mm. or the tacit dimension. For example, it's private. 
I don't want to share with anyone. I hope the public will protect my privacy. But personal is something I feel very strongly, and maybe this uh, kind of uh, existential commitment. And I want my personal belief or my personal sense of the importance of something to be debated, to be discussed. So they, they are also transparent. So something that you feel very strongly, now using a rather awkward word, is embodied knowledge, uh, experiential no, knowledge. No, we have to be very careful in using the words. Mm -hmm. I, wouldn't, I would never use the word belief. Mm -hmm. or knowledge. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is not a belief. Uh -huh. Although, let's say, pragmatism also, and the neo-positivism, they take uh, as a uh, unit of knowledge, beliefs. Sure, sure. No. Mm -hmm. belief is, beliefs are personal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But My beliefs go with me to the tomb. Yes, but uh, there's one kind, you know, the distinction I try to make is that, uh, uh, let's say, Belief that uh, personally felt strongly is not is not rational, but it's debatable. It's uh, Belief arguable. Belief should not be debatable. It's it's just a commitment which is dogma. Yes. But you see, I I think so far as I can see, there are two kinds of belief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One is the, those beliefs who create their object, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and another kind of beliefs. We believe in the truth of a proposition. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this proposition may be true, mm -hmm. may be yeah. false, may be absurd. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. for the believer, it makes no difference. Right. So by chance, the, a belief can be a belief, a belief in the truth of a proposition, sure. which is true. Yes. But this is by coincidence. Yes. Yeah, but the first kind of belief, which creates its own object, and that kind of belief, uh, it's different from the second one, yes. because the second yes. one is, yes. uh, say, religious belief. Religious belief is the, mostly the second one. Yeah. But let's say for Mohammed and yes, the of other, are of the first one. The first one. It, yes. yes, they oh, create oh. their objects, and then the others, the believers, take the beliefs and say, Mohammed is say, or Jesus is saying truth, the truth, mm -hmm. or Confucius, or whatever. Yeah. So both of them would not be classified under the category of rationality. I don't like the word rationality. What is oh. rationality? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't use the word rationality. Mm -hmm. I, I try to s say what people uh, understand of rationality. And what the people understand is the opposite of metaphysical. Rational mm -hmm. metaphysical. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This uh, mm -hmm. couple of uh, concepts. Mm -hmm. I d personally, I don't use the word rational. Never. That, do you have anything like a functional equivalent? I say knowledge. Knowledge is very knowledge, important. Knowledge, I see. Uh, because if it's knowledge, in a way, directly or indirectly, you, you can justify. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, of course, to, to justify a proposition with, this, with the past. It's mm -hmm. not easy. I know mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. difficulties. But theoretically, it justif is uh, verifiable. Not justifiable, verifiable. Sorry, I'm, mm -hmm. I use the false word. Mm -hmm. Verifiable. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's also falsifiable. Also falsifiable, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. Ver verifiable or falsifiable. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you, you make a distinction in this sense between knowledge and wisdom? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So let's say um, the relationship between knowledge and wisdom. Because you cannot simply uh, reduce knowledge, uh, reduce uh, uh, wisdom to knowledge, just as no. you cannot reduce knowledge to simply information or data. The wisdom is a personal characteristic. There are mm -hmm. wise people, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there this specificity of them is w what we call wisdom. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is something different. Mm -hmm. Knowledge mm -hmm. are propositions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Say a person who is considered wise and not necessarily very knowledgeable. Uh, in which sense? For example, for example, a guru mm. Mm, or a sage. And I think in, oh, the, in the Confucian tradition, there's mm. a distinction. Mm. Say you really don't have to have a lot of knowledge because knowledge itself is... Uh, no, mm -hmm. just a moment. We have to use the... Uh, also, we have to have a clear 
concept of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is not information. Certainly not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you don't, you must not have much knowledge, what I say, to have learned a lot of things. But mm -hmm. knowledge is something uh, is, uh, is uh, gained in our contact with the object, directly with the object. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's say uh, virtue ethics, the internalization of values uh, in the Aristotelian, uh, Aristotelian sense. Uh, will you say it's a form of moral knowledge? To know, no, it's philosophical knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, the, to know what, uh, let us say, justice, to be just is, or to know what uh, uh, any uh, virtue is mm -hmm. philosophical knowledge, but to become virtuous mm -hmm. is something different. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is very important in this mm -hmm. respect, mm -hmm. because uh, if you don't, you are not aware of what wisdom is, or of what uh, so the very important uh, uh, Aristotelian uh, what is it called? Phronesis is let Phronesis, us say. Yeah, Phronesis. Phronesis. It's an intellectual is virtue in fact, it's not an ethical virtue. Uh, then you do things by chance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, and if you are uh, we have the, this, the examples you gave, the sages, they have an empirical knowledge Mm -hmm. which is gathered with the time mm -hmm. when people reflect on things. Mm -hmm. But um, it's difficult to be, con uh, uh, to be, what, uh, to be consistent. Yes. It's difficult to be consistent, mm -hmm. but if you are aware, you have the knowledge of this, you are also consistent. Mm -hmm. Now, normally, you know, uh, in the Confucian tradition, you can say the ultimate meaning of life is uh, not, on, not only realizable, but ought to be realized in ordinary human existence. So each and every human being is uh, aware of, of something which is uh, not virtue ethics in a strict sense. There's, uh, I don't know whether this uh, position that Mencius uh, argues that uh, like, like uh, empathy or sympathy or a sense of uh, not necessarily right or wrong, but sense to know. In other words, I say the ability to know, the ability to will, the ability to... Um, this is practical wisdom. Practical yeah. wisdom, which is important, of course, for life. Yeah, but the, these practical, uh, these forms of practical reason, wisdom, uh, wisdom, uh, can can these forms be understood as uh, naturally and necessarily human, or they have to be we have to be learned. We have no. We they have to be learned, and also they have to be evaluated. Mm -hmm. uh, before uh, we try to spread them, they have to be evaluated philosophically. Mm -hmm. Because a, a, it can be a virtue, human virtue, but it can be also a value judgment of, of uh, related to the time. Mm -hmm. So we cannot take for granted uh, what sages or uh, prophets said. Mm -hmm. the, they said also very well, important things. Oh, they I have to be evaluated they and based upon the empirical, yeah. empirical situation. Yes. And uh, uh, in, in this uh, particular sense, the, uh, the philosophical knowledge about human rights is a precondition. No, mm -hmm. no, it's not a precondition. I say human rights are ethical principles, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but all ethical principles are not human rights. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we have to make this, this uh, there are many, many questions now, especially in, there is a confusion between ethical questions and human rights questions, especially in bioethics now. Bioethics. Bio bioethics. Mm -hmm. Every question is not a question of human rights. Oh, sure, I agree. Ethical I questions. Agree. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no, the opposite. 
ethical ethics is the basis of human rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The opposite. Sure. But uh, ethics uh, covers a much larger range yes. than yes. human rights, which yes. uh, which is very specific. Yes. Um, they yeah. are not specific. They are very. Uh, what do you mean by specific? Not no, they, there's a, there's a realm that we consider human rights, and you know, including basic rights and uh, other forms of rights. But human, when I say human rights, are only basic rights. Okay. Not the other rights. Right. So. Uh, um, the ethical realm is much larger of than this basic of uh, basic human rights. Yes, and uh, uh, these, uh, you know, I agree with you. Uh, if you focus on the basic rights and uh, the possibility of uh, global or universal ethics can be can be established, so it's not uh, universal uh, universal ethics in the general sense of the term. It's very specific <coughs> to the basic uh, to the basic human rights, but uh, these basic human rights, as they express themselves in different cultural traditions, they remain. No, they shouldn't express themselves oh, no. in different traditions. No, no, no. I, I agree with you. I, I think they are universalizable, and they are. Uh, now, by universal human mm -hmm. rights, I mean. Uh, we, we have to be clear on the concept of universal. Mm -hmm. Now, universal is used in valid everywhere. No, I say. Human rights are, and this is for all practical principles, I think, universality of them means they bring demands for every human being. Yeah, but, but you, agree, you whether, agree with that. Whether they are enforced or not in everywhere. Yeah, yeah. but uh, you're basically in, a, in agreement with that position, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so... You mentioned, you know, in passing, that uh, you feel a little bit uneasy about Hans Kuhn's yes, approach to yes, human rights. Yes. Uh, Not what? human rights, ethics. Oh, no, no universal ethics. ethics. Yeah. Uh, this, I said that with the first principle. But uh, for me, ethics, ethical life, is based on knowledge, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not on norms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Norms can help us, including human rights, when we are not uh, able to make right evaluations uh, in a given situation, they increase the probability to protect value. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's not absolute. Uh, the, the important is to be able to, ma to evaluate a situation correctly mm -hmm. and then do what should be done so that values are protected, mm -hmm. of individuals of uh, value. Value and values are protected, mm -hmm. or not be damaged at least. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not easy. But human rights are important for public life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For public life uh, and for legislation. And order, social order. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, the order has to be based on human rights. Yes, yes. Uh, but uh, every, in our personal relation with the others, ethics is important. Sure. But this means ethics, I don't understand ethics as sets of norms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, ethical knowledge is very important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, this uh, ethical norms can help, in, I say that for all professional ethics, so-called mm -hmm. professional ethics, they can help to protect value when we, are, we have not sufficient knowledge of the situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they don't guarantee it. They don't guarantee. It. Guarantee, sure. They don't guarantee. They don't. Because our knowledge about a particular subject uh, can be deepened, can be broadened, and sometimes we consider yes. that uh, yes. uh, of course, ethical mm -hmm. at different. But junctures. for legislation, for it's important to take them as basis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But in given situations, mm -hmm. one has to be very careful to make right evaluations, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and because otherwise, uh, why we want human rights mm -hmm. in order to protect value and people, yes. human beings, to protect yeah. human beings. Yeah. Uh, if uh, we, by using a right, we don't do that, so sure. why? You, you uh, actually have uh, a lot of reservation with the idea, which is not uh, uh, just Confucian, it's also Jewish. Uh, do not do to others what you yes, will not want to do Yes, the so-called golden rule. Oh, no, the golden rule normally is understood, do to others what you want others to do to you. Yes. But the uh, Confucian and... Don't uh, do. Greek, don't. 
yeah. don't do this. But uh, you have some reservations about that. I have great reservations mm -hmm. to, uh, to consider it the most important ethical principle. Mm -hmm. Because I say it's a typical example of, of a hypothetical imperative in, with Kant's language. Mm -hmm. It's easy to understand each other with this Kantian term. Yeah. Uh, if you want this, do that. Or mm. if you want this, don't do that. If you don't want this, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So but it's, it's not a categorical imperative. I say mm -hmm. I don't even, I never would have uh, suffered this, uh, be, this uh, treatment. Mm -hmm. I would do it, I would do it myself. Mm -hmm. I had, uh, if the, there will be a workshop and I will speak on human dignity, what is mm -hmm. human dignity. Then uh, I start with that. Once there was a uh, television program, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. live program. Mm -hmm. So the, the person who was speaking with me, the journalist, he said, Professor, you made a connection uh, between philosophy and torture. Mm. I was shocked. What? Mm -hmm. But I, it was a, live, uh, a live uh, production. Then I said, there is no... Uh, connection between philosophy and torture. But when you look at the fact of torture mm -hmm. with philosophical ethical knowledge, mm -hmm. we see the following, mm -hmm. that people think that the tortured, the to tortured person is degraded. Mm -hmm. I say no. Mm -hmm. Degraded is the, the person who tortures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because he could, he was, it was in his, uh, he couldn't do that. But the other one is staying like that. So uh, it's not, to, uh, in all ethical relations, we protect our human dignity by what we are doing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not but by what we suffer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But people, even the uh, title of the convention and the declaration against inhuman degrading treatment mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, torture is a considered to be a degraded treatment. No, I say degrading for those who torture, mm -hmm. not for mm -hmm. the torture. This word torture. So mm -hmm. in all ethical relations like that, I say I don't do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had this summer um, camping for children mm -hmm. on human rights mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. called it I don't do that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in Turkish mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. important. Th this is why a kind of a human rights education is very important. Sure, sure. So Not, I, mm -hmm. please. I don't do that. Actually, specifically, I don't do that to someone. And or in general, if it's... Or to an animal too, okay. No, to, not to animal. But if I use my vote also. Vote. No, it's mm -hmm. not against someone, mm -hmm. but if it's also For something. Uh, For an something. action of mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's terrific. You have to have some breakfast. Are uh, you no, going okay, to a meeting? Okay. Okay. Then, then no, no problem. So, what? Uh, what I think it's uh, very critical um, in understanding, not the philosophical background, but in terms of your own style of reasoning. If if you want to identify the philosophical resources, in terms of your own reasoning, and Kant is uh, extremely important. What are, what are some other great, uh, great minds, uh, philosophically, that inform your own uh, philosophizing, your own doing philosophy? You see, Kant is very important, but it's not sufficient pr for me. Sure. I, sta I start my own ethics mm -hmm. from, uh, by saying, uh, and goodwill, uh, with, uh, with a sentence from Camus, the plague, mm -hmm. et la bonne volonté, Mm -hmm. peut faire autant de dégâts que la méchanceté si elle n'est pas éclairée. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A good will can cause uh, the same damage sure. if it's not sufficiently enlightened. Sure. The whole Buddhist tradition is based upon compassion, uh, which is a form of sympathy. And another tradition that I'm... Sympathy and compassion is the same word etymologically. Sure, sure. And uh, the other one, Oh, for example, right now this uh, not a declaration, uh, yeah, a declaration of compassion uh, as a declaration of human rights. Now, the um, the question there is that uh, 
if, in practical term, uh, your sympathetic response to the people very close to you often are more intense than your sympathetic response to a stranger. But the idea is that you really need to extend your sympathetic uh, responses to your parents or to your children. Without this expansion, uh, that sympathy suffer suffocates and becomes uh, totally constrained. And so the extension of sympathy is to involve an ever-expanding network of people. And that's commonly is considered as an important ethical evaluation of the it's human. It's very important. To mm. st it's normal to start from our most near, nearest people right. and then go to the world. Right. This is important. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, uh, we have to be very careful uh, not to confuse this wisdom with philosophical knowledge. Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, this is important because it has a basis, a, a basis, of epi epistemic basis, mm -hmm. what we say. This uh, attitude to, uh, to have, to, to care, mm -hmm. to care, for, care for, others. Uh, to, mm -hmm. for your people around you and then mm -hmm. for your compatriots and for the whole world. Mm -hmm. so it's very important. Mm -hmm. But uh, why? Mm -hmm. We can justify it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not because it's said by a saint or by a mm. wise because man. Because common, common experience. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, because we can evaluate it, see that why it's important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not sufficient that it is said by someone mm -hmm. who, who who admire or who mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. justify it. Mm -hmm. To justify. Mm -hmm. More more recently, I think uh, first in French, that now in many languages, uh, this Pierre Hadot. He uh, talks about philosophy as a way of life. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, the subtitle is Spiritual Exercises from Socrates to uh, even Michel Foucault. It's not philosophy that uh, what it's a way of life based on philosophy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I. Uh, because we uh, people confuse uh, worldviews with philosophical knowledge. And I'm strictly against that. Worldviews are not philosophy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, they, are, they are important. I don't mean that they are uh, Lebensanschauung. Yes. They are, yes. They are important. It, yes. uh, some of them are important, no, mm -hmm. perhaps not all of them. Mm -hmm. But we have not to consider them as philosophy. Mm -hmm. If we look at the, uh, um, I can even say the evolution of philosophical thinking as uh, it changes in some way, especially since the 19th century, especially in the 20th century, there's a professionalization of philosophy. You know, people who are consider themselves philosophers or uh, teachers of philosophers are in philosophy departments. So this professionalization helps to establish standards, I think, especially in the analytical school. The analytical school is a very narrow school. Yes, okay. And of course, you have phenomenology. And, it's and very others. important up to a point. Uh, uh, if they try to analyze concepts, it's good. Mm -hmm. It's something important, but it's not the, aim of, the only aim of philosophy. This is a tool. Yes, yes. But uh, what is your view about the professionalization? You know, we say they are philosophers, they are sociologists. My sense is that. Uh, all the other disciplines may have their own criteria and they do their job well. But philosophy, if it turned out to be a profession, um, the reflexivity of the philosopher in understanding his or her own work continues. So I agree with you that analytical tools are significant. But um, will you consider the uh, the continental philosophical thinking, of phenomenology and so forth, a much more appropriate way of trying to use the tools and try to think um, philosophically about 
everything. Phenomenology, of course, there are different branches also of phenomenology, is important because he calls attention to the object. Yes. Zurück zu den Sachen. Yes. Uh, the, from this side is important, not, uh, not from every side. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, um, the analytical school, it's, it's the, uses this dichotomy. Either it's science or metaphysics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, and they try to. The they starting try to, mm -hmm. point is propositions, mm -hmm. not the object. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not the object. So it's good, but uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we should never forget, I think, why we do the sciences, why we do philosophy for a better world, for a better life, mm -hmm. <laughs> for a more humane life. We must never forget that. Mm -hmm. And philosoph philosopher is uh, the one who brings new knowledge in this area. Sure. It's not a profession like the others. Mm -hmm. it you are a teacher of philosophy. This mm -hmm. is a profession, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But phil a philosopher is the person who brings new knowledge. Mm -hmm. well, what is your evaluation of the, I think, contemporary philosophical thinking? Uh, not, not calm, but Nietzsche. Nietzsche. Nietzsche, Nietzsche becomes very uh, uh, powerful as a, as a resource. So the people who consider themselves or deconstructionist, or the people who mm. consider themselves. So I don't know what is the evaluation of, say, Heidegger. Uh, uh -huh. I'm not in good relations with Heidegger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Nietzsche is very important and very easy to misunderstand him. Yes. I have a book on Nietzsche. Mm -hmm. I read the whole work mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, at the time. Not the whole Montinari edition, but the mm -hmm. Schlechter edition. I read everything. You know this uh, Walter Kaufman? Yes. Yeah, he's done the uh, translation. It's, it's a little... Uh, a little uh, psychoanalytic approach of mm -hmm, Walter mm -hmm, Kaufman. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a dangerous thinker. If you don't be careful in distinguishing who makes speak, I distinguish between three types mm -hmm. in Nietzsche. And you can find also contradiction. No. He is very important, but you have to know him as a whole. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. it's not a systematic writer. No, no. You have to systematize things. Mm -hmm, uh, his mm -hmm. uh, ideas. What are the three uh, uh, he aspects? Speaks, he speaks of um, uh, the so-called mm -hmm. uh, the herde, the the mass man. Mm -hmm. The then, uh, the overman or the superman. No, no, the mass man. No, the, then, then uh, he speaks of another type who uh, tries to become free mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. this. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, gen, uh, from this, um, from what he has already learned, the morals of his uh, t time of his society, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then some uh, they manage to do that, but they uh, they stay until their end of their life, either as um, protest uh, protesting permanently, mm -hmm. or they become ascetes. They Asket, they prefer an ascetic life. Mm -hmm. And there is the third type who mm -hmm. uh, has become a, a, a Übermensch. Mm -hmm. The uh, what? The third type is the Übermensch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, creative, the creative person in any area. So the, uh, the difference between the master man and the uh, so-called overman or superman um, is what? The uh, he, he enumerates the characteristics of the Superman. He is creative. He, he's, uh, and he has in, uh, in Zarathustra a very in, uh, nice metaphor. Mm -hmm. uh, I will speak to you of three metamorphoses of, of the mind, mm -hmm. Geist. Mm -hmm. How? the mind or the, the human person mm -hmm. has become a, a camel. 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 Mm -hmm. Then how it has become a lion and mm -hmm. then a child. I see. I see. Mm -hmm. so, okay. I think, uh, I think thank you very much. I, I've taken a lot of your time.